What's up, everybody? My name is Deltleet, and welcome back to Juno New Origins. Now, in today's episode of the tutorial series, we're going to be talking about building your first orbital class rocket. Now, an orbital class rocket is any launch vehicle that is capable of delivering a payload into a stable orbit around your starting planet. Uh, in this case, we're going to be launching from Drew. So we need a rocket that's going to have enough delta V and thrust to get up out of the atmosphere and accelerate up to around 3,200 meters per second to achieve orbital velocity. Now, for our payload, we're going to be launching this little command pod right here. And before we launch it, one of the things I definitely need to make sure we have is a heat shield so that when we come back down, we will be able to survive re-entry. Next, I'm going to add an inner stage so that we can separate our payload from the rest of our fuel. And then we'll put the fuel tank back on as well as the engine. So this is going to be our upper stage. Now, we're not going to leave it here. There are a couple of things I want to change. First, I want to shrink down the size of this upper stage engine quite a bit. And the reason I'm doing that is because we don't need as much thrust in our upper stage as we do in our lower stages. Our upper stage is just going to be responsible for accelerating the rocket once it's already in space. So I'm going to make uh, the engine smaller and then I'm going to make the nozzle you see here this nozzle length very very large here and that's going to give us the best efficiency when we're in space now we're going to add a second inner stage and have that cover up the bottom of the engine and we'll add another lower stage this first stage will be our booster stage and we'll stretch this out to something like 12 meters 12 should be plenty and i'll also widen it because we're going to want more fuel on our lower stage here we'll go 1.4 meters in radius now I'm going to add rocket engines to the bottom of this. We will use the, where is it? We will use the mage engine here. Uh, and we'll just use the stock mage engine. We're not going to change it up too much because this is already optimized for in atmosphere. And I'm going to use radial two symmetry to add two of them to the bottom of this stage. Now, a couple of things we can do to tweak it to make it look a little nicer. I'm going to tuck these engines up a little bit into the bottom of the fuel tank. I'm also going to get rid of the simple texture on most of these, and we'll just have it be a clean, smooth-looking rocket. Uh, the simple texture does look a little tacky at times. Another thing I could do to make it look better is change the seamless edge. Now, before we take this thing to the launch pad, we need to look at our staging, and we need to make sure that everything is in its correct stage. So we have our first two booster engines, and then we have an inner stage and our upper stage engine. Then we have the inner stage that separates our payload, and we have the parachute. And if we look here, our delta V shows we have a thrust to weight ratio of 1.88, uh, 1.66 at sea level. And then our second stage will have a thrust to weight ratio of 0.93 with plenty of delta V to get into orbit. So this rocket absolutely will get into orbit. We could actually make this a little bit smaller, and it would still get into orbit. Uh, this has plenty of power, so I'm not too worried about achieving orbit with this thing. This has got all the power we need, all the fuel we need to get into orbit. So let's take it to the launch pad, and I will show you how to launch it. All right, so here we are at the large launch pad at the Drew Space Center. A beautiful sunny day here, and we're going to first hit the Z key. And the Z key throttles up our engines all the way. You can see if I hit X, it brings my throttle down to zero. If I hit Z, it brings it up to 100. I can also directly control my throttle using control to lower and shift to raise. But for the most part, we're just going to be at full throttle for this flight. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open up my nav ball here. And I'm going to open up the toggle nav sphere panel. And I'm going to lock my heading. So locking my heading is basically just going to tell the rocket to fly in a straight line the way it's currently pointing. And you can see this green circle here on the nav ball is showing me where my heading has been locked. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and hit spacebar to activate my first stage, which will light my engines, and I'm already up and away. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll so that east is above me, basically right there. And once we get up a little bit, I'm going to hit the S key and basically pitch up and roll backwards into into my launch trajectory. So what I'm trying to accomplish here is I want to be pointing east and kind of fly up at a slight angle, but mostly vertical here for the first couple of seconds until I see my apoapsis getting up around 15. That looks about right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit prograde and I'm going to let the rocket go ahead and follow its prograde vector. Now prograde vector just means the direction that my rocket is moving. So it's going to point the direction it's moving. It's pretty simple. Next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be throttling down my rocket. I want to keep my thrust to weight ratio around 2, a little under 2. Uh, if I have a thrust to weight ratio over 2, 
I'm uh, accelerating a little bit too fast and drag is going to become too much of a problem. So I'll be burning more fuel when I could be waiting and saving my fuel to burn it higher up in the atmosphere. As my rocket burns fuel, uh, my rocket becomes lighter and then my thrust to weight ratio goes up because it's same amount of thrust, but it's a lighter rocket because there's less fuel. So now that we're up here, I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, orbit down here on my velocity indicator. This basically changes my reference frame from surface to orbit, which is going to change slightly uh, because Drew is spinning. So the surface itself has some velocity, whereas orbit just looks at the velocity relative to the planet as a whole. Okay, so my apoapsis here is over 80,000, now closer to 90,000 meters, 90 kilometers. So I'm going to go ahead and pitch down a little bit more. We don't need to be pitching up because our apoapsis is out of the atmosphere. We know that we are going to be uh, exiting the atmosphere here pretty soon. I don't need to worry about any more vertical height. Now all I need to worry about is getting as fast as I can going sideways. Because orbits, the way an orbit really works is that you are falling so fast... To the side that even though you're falling back to earth or drew in this case even though you're falling back to drew you're going so fast that drew curves away from you faster than you can fall towards it so we are now pointing basically flat uh, parallel to the horizon i'm going to throttle all the way up now that we're in space i don't have to worry about drag our first stage is expired i will separate my first and second stages and there we go. We are now on our second stage, which will carry us the rest of the way into orbit. Uh, we've got an apoapsis now at about 100 kilometers, and we are accelerating. I'm just going to go ahead and hit time warp here, because all we're doing now is burning to get into orbit. Okay, you can see we're very close into getting into orbit. So right here, what you're seeing is my path. This blue line is my path. If I were to cut my engines right now, I would still fall back to Drew, but I wouldn't be going fast enough, and so Drew would come back, and I would basically make contact with the surface over here. But if I let this go a little bit longer, you'll see that I'm falling faster and faster and faster and faster, and eventually I'm moving so fast that Drew's surface can't catch up with me again. And just like that, we have achieved a stable orbit. We're now, uh, we have an apoapsis over here of 123 kilometers and a periapsis of 102 kilometers. So we are in a stable orbit. Now, if I time accelerate, gravity is still pulling us down towards the planet, but we are falling slower, or I should say, we are going so fast that the planet curves away from us before we're able to fall back down to it. So we can stay in orbit for as long as we want. And we're going to continue to orbit Drew uh, basically infinitely in real life. There are still tiny, tiny amounts of gas from the atmosphere, even at this altitude. And you would slowly begin to experience some drag and slow down from all those small particles and gas in the atmosphere uh, that would slowly drag your orbit back down. But in Juno New Origins, they only model air density up to a certain altitude. And then once you're beyond that... It just stops calculating drag altogether. So you can see we are in a nice stable orbit. I can turn on the orbits of all the other crafts that are orbiting around the planet. You can see all of them taking their different paths as well. Now that we've been in orbit for a little bit, I think it's time that we brought ourselves back down. So we are coming around this uh, peninsula right here, and we have a nice big ocean ahead of us. So what I'm going to do is lock my velocity vector retrograde which means I'm going to be basically pointing exactly the opposite direction that I'm moving. I've still got a little bit of fuel here in my upper stage. I'm going to throttle up, and you can see my orbit is lowering, 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 and then I'm going to collide with the planet now because I'm going too slow. Now, the idea is we want to slow down as much as possible uh, and probably put our collision point, our impact point, uh, a little bit closer to land here. Okay, so we have burned enough fuel. We have slowed ourselves down enough. We will be falling into the ocean. I'm going to separate my command pod and my upper stage here. So it's just the command pod now coming in for re-entry. And as soon as we hit the atmosphere, you will start to see us decelerating. Let's monitor my heat shield here. You can see the temperature of the heat shield is climbing very quickly. And we're seeing those re-entry effects now as, uh, as our command pod heats up. We are moving very fast and the atmosphere is slowing us down very quickly. All right, we have punched through the thickest of the atmosphere, and so I'm going to go ahead and arm my parachute. Uh, so in a couple of seconds now, 
or no, once we hit uh, 4.33 kilometers, our parachute will deploy and it will inflate at 300 kilometers. So there it is, our parachute has deployed. We're going to continue falling till about 300 meters. Then it will inflate. And there we are. We are uh, under a parachute and we can basically just let this parachute carry us the rest of the way down to the ground. All right, guys, if you found this video helpful, please like it and leave a comment below asking what you think I should do next for my tutorial series. I hope you guys are finding the game very enjoyable and that these tutorials are helping you understand some of those basic concepts. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.